Hi there, it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Today I'm going to be showing you a really fun and simple technique and I'm sure that you have everything that you need to create this. If you have been crafting for any little amount of time, then there are not too many bits and pieces needed for this technique. Now this is basically just making a smaller border than what we actually need and adding a few details and we are good to go. This is going to be using the mini floral wonder stamp today. However, I have these ones here and these are all going to work perfect. So on the left is the mini garden spray. In the middle is the mini scented blooms and then of course on the right is the mini floral wonder these are all like individual flowers taken out of larger stamp sets and these are a really low price point which is perfect for my kind of card making now to start off with today i have got a five by five inch card base then i have a four and three quarter by four and three quarter a card front and i'm only using a card front because i'm going to be using some alcohol markers today so i need to make sure that i can hide the bleed through then I have a little piece that is two and five eighths by two and five eighths. Now that square for the middle is definitely something that you can change up to suit whatever image you are going to use. I'm starting off using an anti-static powder bag. That is because I'm going to heat emboss this image. I like stamping all of my, uh, pretty much all of my images in the Versafine Onyx Black Ink. Now the reason that we need this little square in the middle is this is what is going to create our frame that we are going to um, add in later on so I kind of placed it in the middle figured out where I wanted the stamp to go over top and then once I've done that I am going to press down to transfer the ink then I'm going to pop on some clear embossing powder over top of this and heat set it you definitely don't have to heat emboss this I really like doing this because a it's quick and easy and b it means that I can't smudge the ink I can't do anything like that or it doesn't bleed through or anything um, it's just kind of like an insurance policy for me because usually if I can smudge it I probably will um, now these are the tri blend spectrum noir alcohol markers that I use these are the only alcohol markers that I have and in these alcohol markers there are three colors in every pen so to the left is the light the middle is the mid and then the dark on the right and so they just have three of the bullet tips you can also get these in the brush markers as well they are the light gray barrel I will link these down below in case you're interested in checking these out but this just takes out all of the thinking for me when it comes to alcohol markers I love not having to worry about which colors I'm going to be able to blend together trying to get a light a medium and a dark of each color they are literally there in one pen ready to go so this is what I prefer to use I am not an alcohol marker colorist it's not my favorite or sort of most relaxing coloring method that I choose but I mean I do still enjoy it and uh, so I'm going to go through this really quickly because I am just not one to follow at all for uh, alcohol marker coloring I can really just do the basics and I'm happy with what I achieve but it's certainly nothing fantastic Lots of the time I will just put on the dark color first and then blend it out using the mid and then the light or sometimes uh, depending on the jump often I will just go straight to the light but uh, other times I prefer to kind of color the whole image in the light and then go back over from light to dark medium and then to light again. Now for this one I chose to do the citrus blend uh, for the yellows I again you can just whatever image you would like is going to work in the middle of these projects and you'll kind of see at the end it's kind of hard to explain where I'm going to go with this but I just wanted to kind of take you through the process and then if you're interested in trying it again you can watch the video again um, if you want to kind of walk back and see why I had all those measurements and those bits at the beginning um, but it will kind of become obvious as we go around and a couple of other things as I said you don't necessarily even need um, to have this little card front piece if I'm using alcohol markers then they are very likely to bleed through uh, to the other side and of course I don't want that on the inside of my card so if you are going to use something like just uh, blending with inks then that's going to be absolutely fine um, if you're just coloring lightly with those now here is where the square comes in so I like to place this over my image I want my image to come outside of my frame now this square here is only a guide and if you find it uh, tricky to kind of line things up then you could always cut this out in a piece of spare plastic or a piece of acetate that way you can line it up perfectly whilst being able to see through it but I'm just taking a fine liner black marker and I'm going around the edge of this square this just keeps me on track and I'm not going through the image so I'm making sure to skip any of those pieces that are sticking outside of the image and I want things to stick outside the image I want the frame to appear smaller 
and it almost appears like the image is kind of in front of that frame. Now just to add a few more details, these are so basic and you cannot go wrong with this. This is my kind of card making. I'm adding three kind of not straight but not purposely squiggly lines down the side of my images. I'm making sure they cross over at the ends. This is going to look a little bit funny for just a minute, but I promise it will kind of come together and the look will be there. I It's one of those techniques that you can kind of do for any images, anything at all, and it looks really cool in the end. Well, I think it looks good in the end, um, but honestly, it does not take too much talent or energy at all to be able to do this, and it almost looks like it could have been stamped this way. So you can see all of my lines here. Now I'm just adding some kind of almost scribbles, I guess, around the outside, and that is going to add a little bit more. Then I'm going to add a few black dots just lined up. Some of them have got two, some have got three, some have got four, and any black fine liner pen is going to work really well. I like this one because it matches the VersaFine Onyx black color that I used to stamp in as well. Then to give this a little bit of dimension, I have some black fun foam here. Now any color is going to work. This is just the cheap and cheerful stuff that is from the kids shop. And I'm going to put some stick it double sided adhesive on both sides of this. You absolutely can use liquid glue that is going to work just fine. You can also just use some double sided tape like a roll of it. That is going to work fine too. But this is just what I had sitting on my desk beside me. So I was going for the easiest option at this point. Sometimes in my crafting, I do not get very much time to craft by myself. So sometimes when I am crafting by myself, I tend to grab the easiest option. Um, <laughs> I have two gorgeous, gorgeous little children who love, love, love to help me. And they do often help me and they appear in these videos, but sometimes I just need to not have a gorgeous little human sitting on my lap to be able to line things up. So sometimes I just speed through my card making the best that I can. That's kind of only when it comes to making these videos. Don't worry, we get lots and lots of crafting together and lots and lots of card making, which they love. Now, here are a couple of other ones that I made. I made a very similar image, but with oranges. Then I did a couple of butterflies. With the right-hand one there, I actually colored in the inside frame with the black, and I mean, I quite like that as well. I guess it just depends what you like. You could also use a color to color it in, and I created those ones a little bit smaller. The black frame that I went to uh, draw around, I just made that, depending on how big the image is that I used, then I just made the um, little square bigger or smaller. But as I said, if you need to be able to see through it, then a piece of acetate or spare packaging is going to work really well too. I did want to add a couple more details to this yellow one here, and this is just how you can kind of step it up a little bit more. I'm going to add some glossy accents. This is just a product that goes on kind of liquidy, but it pretty much stays in place. It is a cloudy liquid when it goes on. Then when it dries, it's going to dry nice and crystal clear, very shiny with a little bit of dimension, and that is going to be perfect for a pretty clean and simple card. I did decide to leave the sentiments off on these ones. However, you could definitely stamp a sentiment underneath. Or you could perhaps just stamp it on the inside. So it's up to you. I don't find that cards always have to have a sentiment. It doesn't bother me when they don't. I quite like it. And for these ones, I just like that those images are front and center. Now there is the glossy accents, all nice and dry. It provides gorgeous shine. And these are my cards today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope this has inspired you. As usual, I will leave links to the products I've used in today's video in the description box below this video. And other than that, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.